We're in Romans chapter 8 today. We have like the last two weeks of sermons on here. It's pretty cool. I'm going to get rid of this one, but Josh's ear is going to stay on there. Um, there's probably only two other people that the first five to six minutes of the sermon that are in this room will probably have any clue of what I'm talking about. Um, and the reason is because we're going to talk about pigs. Okay? I'm guessing Mike and Evan are probably going to be the only ones that know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to write these uh, acronyms up here. And if you know them, please feel free to tell me what they are, okay? The first one is S P F. Uh, the second one is M E W. And the third one is S E W. So I am pretty sure that you and you are probably the only ones that have any idea what I'm what the acronym stand for. No? Okay, that's fine. Mike, any luck? It's okay. It's all right. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Okay, I have been around pigs my whole life. I mean, I'm on the ground and they're there, right? And so if you, uh, if you experience working with pigs, okay, and I, I just encourage you, you all should have a pig, okay? You see, pigs are, pigs are very, very strong rugged, I mean, just beast of animals, okay? You with me? But what you don't know is that they are super, super delicate to microbial bacteria and viruses. I mean, take them out, just like that, okay? And in the swine industry, there has been this push to find ways to try to protect the animal's from these diseases or these viruses, okay? Now, SPF stands for Specific Pathogen Free. How many of you knew that? <laughs> Steve knew it? That's awesome. I forgot about Steve. He's a hog guy. Now, we, had, we actually had someone in our community that had an SPF herd. And the origins, the origin, origins, origins of SPF is what would happen is, is they would have a sow, and before she had pigs, they would take her into a, a laboratory, and they would cesarean C-section the pigs out, and then they would take the pigs away from the mom. Okay? And what they were trying to do is break this cycle, the cycle of mama, okay, Mama passing on to little baby. You with me? You, you follow? Bless you. You follow me, what I'm saying? Mom's the one that's got the bugs. Mom's the one that's got all the problems. We don't want the baby to have it. So we're going to take the baby away. Okay? That was one. M-E-W. You know this one? Mew. Mew. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is called medicated early wean ing. Do you know what weaning is? Okay, good. So the premise here was is that, okay, in the first hour or so, first day or so, when a baby is born on a sow, the mom has what's called colostrum. You all know what that is, right? In the milk, right? And in that colostrum is where all this immunity is passed on to the baby. And it is critical that the baby gets that. Sometimes in pig farming, especially if you're doing a lot of them, there's like this stuff called cross-fostering, where one mama might have 14 and another one has 6, and you take some off the 14 and put it on the 6. And, and what they have found is if those babies did not have this mom's colostrum, that they would do really poorly because they were receiving what she was shedding, but they didn't have the immunity that her colostrum would have gave them. Does that make sense? And so what they thought was, is like, okay, let's, let's let the babies um, be on mom for like seven days. 
Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take him off mom, and then we're just going to pour medication to him. That just sounds like a great idea. What a life, right? Okay? And so that was the premise of this one. Are you with me? Now, S-E-W. You know what this one is, no? Okay. This is called segregated early weaning. Okay? Are you with me? And, and this one came out of the fact that this one didn't work, and this one wasn't working great, okay? And so what they decided is, okay, we, we like the fact that the pigs were on the moms, and they got the colostrum, but what we found was is that if the pigs were on the same farm, there was enough movement of people and enough pathogens in the air that even if we, we medicated them really heavy, they still were going to get sick. Okay, so what they decided to do is we'll keep the babies on the sow for seven days. And then after that, we're going to move them from this farm to this farm way over here, segregating them from the moms who like shed all the bad stuff. You with me? And we, we, we weaned them early so that they still had the colostrum, the immunity, and then they're in their own facility and you would not add any more pigs to that till they were gone. That's called all in, all out. See how much you know about pigs now? Isn't that awesome? See, the problem is, is that there are viruses and bacteria that we are not going to be able to get rid of. You with me? Now, how many of you have ever heard of hog cholera? Anybody? It's called the swine flu. You with me? The swine flu has been eradicated from the United States, but it is not eradicated from the world. And it is a very, very deadly disease. Now, do you know why it's eradicated from the United States? Do you know how it was eradicated? You kill all the ones that have it. Everyone that got it, they had to kill. Kind of sad, huh? Um, there's another disease, and this was uh, in my lifetime, and it was called pseudorabies. I don't know if I spelled that right. Close enough. This one was eradicated in 2006. And in 1985, the, our government, the USDA, whatever, they put forth this strategic plan of eradicating it. I mean, you had to blood test animals. If you wanted to sell an animal, you had to blood test the animal. And if that animal tested positive for pseudorabies, your herd was quarantined. And you could not remove a pig from that place and take it anywhere else. And the only way that you could be unquarantined is if you sold them all and you repopulated. So basically, they had to die. You with me? And so that's where we're starting our message today. Okay? You with me? Um, at the beginning, at the beginning of Romans chapter 8, if you are there, please open that up with me. And the first word says, therefore, right? And I had someone tell me a long time ago, when it says a word, therefore, it's there for a reason, okay? And basically, if you see the therefore, then you need to go back and look what was said in Romans chapter 7. And I'm just going to tell you, Josh did a fantastic job of walking us through Romans 7 in very great detail. Okay? And that's this right here. Okay? And he actually kind of went into me right here, Romans 8. <laughs> but it started off with the law. Okay? And then the need for Jesus. And then we die to sin. And then sin loses its power. And then we're alive to God through Jesus. And then we become slaves to righteousness, obeying God by living in the Spirit. Okay? You remember our analogy with the pigs? We were born into sin. You with me? And we can try anything we want. We can try SBF. We can try MEW. We could try S-E-W, but the fact of the matter is that sin is still existing, right? 
And just like pseudo rabies and just like hog cholera, the only way to have eradicated those diseases was death. You follow me? That is the significance of what Jesus did. It was death. That he took all the sins upon him. All of the disease, all of the pseudorabies, all of the hog cholera, he took on him in the metaphoric way. Right? It's as if one pig rose up and said, give me all your pseudorabies, give me all your hog cholera, and I will lay down my life so that you can be free. You with me? And the dynamic is, is that Jesus was the living, breathing example, fulfillment, the pure, sacrificial lamb, blameless and spotless. And he died. He died. And then he rose. And, and I'm going to share a few things that you've heard me say a bazillion times, and I just don't have anything new, so, you know, that's what it is. Um, hopefully you just forget. Let's walk through Romans together. In verse 1, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. I just sometimes, I, I'm going to just keep going back to this. And you've heard me say it before, I'm going to say it again. When, when I give my life to Jesus, and I, I, I confess my sins, and I say, Jesus, I need you, please forgive me of my sins, that, that's a one-time surrender. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a statement I'm making. It's a decision I'm making. And when I'm baptized and I go down, I, I'm dying to myself. Okay? And, and, and I'm rising up. And I become a new life. Okay? And Jesus has saved me from my sins. Amen? Okay, Jesus is my Savior. But, but the problem lies in that we don't want to take the next step. Okay, so if I die to myself, then how am I supposed to live? Well, it goes on in Romans here, and it helps us a little bit understand that. Listen to what it says as we read on, verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. We, are, everyone, you, we all understand this part that I, Jesus is my Savior, but we don't embrace the whole fact that we truly died. We, we died to ourselves, and it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ Jesus that lives in me. And now Jesus must be my Lord. He must be my master. I'm not a slave to that sin anymore. I've been set free. But now, as Josh said, we are a slave to righteousness or obedience. You know, I tell this to the Discovering Hope kids every single time we get together. You know, a servant doesn't get up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to do all this stuff. No, the servant has to check in with the master and be about the master's business. I find it interesting. We talked about this this morning in men's group. When, when I come up out of that water, all of a sudden I have a new identity. That new identity is that I am a child of God. Well, in theory, 
children are supposed to obey their parents. Right? In theory. And, and I find it interesting, too, that it's the only commandment with a promise. Children, obey your parents so that it will go well with you the rest of your days. And, and I, I'm just going to say that I believe that that commandment was for us as believers, not as us as parents. You know, we like to lord it over our kids sometimes. Well, Jesus said, right? Well, no, God said I'm to obey him. I'm to obey him. You know, how many times do we read in John, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. Again, discovering hope. How many times do I say to you over and over again, if we're to walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, then we must know what Jesus says. We can't obey what Jesus says if we don't know what he says. And, and what will be the determining factor? Will, it, will we obey Jesus when everyone else thinks it's a good idea? Or will we obey Jesus because we're obeying Jesus? No matter what everybody else says. Let's read on. You, and I'm in verse 9, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. I always say Galatians 2.20 to you. And it's just, a, it's just a nice verse, right? <clears throat> I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ Jesus that lives in me. The life I live now in this body, I live by faith. In him who loved me and gave himself up for me. You know, we all say it. We all can say it. But, but, but do I live it? Do I live it? Paul goes on in the next verse. And he says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. An obligation. What is an obligation? <laughs> Commitment. We have to do it. We have to do it. There's so many other places in the scripture where Paul talks about that we were bought at a price. Right? What does redeemer mean when we call Jesus our, our, our redeemer? What does it mean? Been rescued. We had a we had a bond on our life, and it was paid. Do you think the struggles that we go through now are going to even matter when we're in heaven? Let me ask you this. If I have to live the rest of this life here, dead and not get to do what I want. Is that going to be worth not experiencing second death? So those of you that don't know what I'm referring to, in the scripture it talks about the, 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 the rec resurrection of the believers, right? It talks about the second death. And the second death is when we stand before Christ and those that are not names are not written in the book of life are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Forever. I, you know, I'm just going to say, I don't think I would like that. Are you with me? 
And I'm just going to say, I don't, I, don't, I don't want that for anybody. I, you know, maybe I'm just getting soft and really emotional, but I'm finding myself, you know, as I walk just around people, I'm just like, oh, I, I, oh how I long for you to understand Jesus. How I long for you to embrace Jesus. And sometimes I just feel like I just, I don't, I don't make, I don't reach, I don't get through to people. We have an obligation, but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we also may share in his glory. (coughs) Excuse me. I I don't know how to... Pigs had to die. Pigs had to die. For the the sin, the disease, to be eradicated. Right? Jesus died for our sins, yes. But we have to die to ourself to live. So many people want to embrace Jesus as their Savior, but not Jesus as their Lord. And I just want to encourage you. Is Jesus your Lord? Is he your Lord? You know, we had these incredible crusades that took place throughout the years and people would in mass stadiums come forward and they would embrace Jesus as their savior but see that's the easy part the hard part is dying to self every day Jesus said if you want to follow me you must deny yourself pick up your cross die daily Right? And then follow. You know, I'm not making this up. Do you know how freeing it is to not have to worry about who you are, what you portray. We live in a society that people are consumed with that. My kids said I could probably care a little bit more about the way I look, right? (laughs) But I'm just telling you, once you get poop on you, you just might as well be covered in poop because it doesn't matter. My identity is in Christ Jesus. I am an adopted child of God. And that is all I need. And I receive the Holy Spirit, which is a deposit that says, guaranteeing that I will not die. I might, I'm going to die physically in this earth, but I am not going to die in hell. I am not going to be cast into the lake of fire. I am going to be invited in and be embraced by Jesus who says, well done, good and faithful servant. And that is the ultimate. That is the goal. That is what we want. And for us to achieve that, not achieve, but us to walk in that, we have to die to self. You know, I'm not a 
a philosopher, okay? I observe people, okay? I think one of the main reasons that our society is the way it is is because we as believers have wanted to have both feet in both realms, We don't want to die to ourselves. We want to live the American dream. We want to do all these things. And, and okay, so don't, don't just bite my head off right away. But just, just hear me out. What if we all were living for Jesus all the time? I don't know what that looked like. I mean, here's Paul writing this, and he would stay up late making tents, providing for himself. So it's like he didn't quit working, right? But the main focus of what he was about was talking about the gospel. You, this morning, did you just see what, what happens when you pray? When you pray... God can do anything. He can bring strangers together to be lifelong best friends. Amen? God can do all things. I've just been challenged by that. Let's continue to finish up here. I consider that, I'm in verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from bondage to decay and be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen has no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Think about that. What, are you, what is your hope based on? That's kind of been our theme this year in discovering hope. Hope is what is yet to come. I've been promised eternal life, right? I'm promised eternal life. And that is what's going to give me joy here and now. Because that cannot be taken from me. And that's what gives me peace. And so if that's what my focus is on, I'm not going to be one of these people that do this all the time, right? Based on the circumstances around me. I'm not going to have this false hopes that are always going to crumble around me. Or looking for something to give me hope. It's never going to change. In Christ Jesus, I am going to receive eternal life. Amen? And it's guaranteed. And I am just to walk obediently to my master. And how do I do that? Well, this is what it tells you. Things in here to do. There's a prayer that I pray every day. And it is, and you've heard it before. It says, Lord, don't let your interruptions become inconveniences to me. Are we ready every day for the master to say, hey, buddy, I need you to do this. Hey, buddy, I need you to do this. Funny story. This was in Discovering Hope. I still think this is funny. So we were talking to Sophia, and we were talking about, I'm trying to remember now. We were talking about um, Jesus speaking to us and, and reaching out to us and and then all of a sudden her phone just goes, bzz, 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 and everybody in the room just started laughing. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's calling her. And so it was funny. Um, sorry, sidebar. Um, he talks about creation groaning, longing. Do, do, do we do that? See, see, I think we have this longing and this groaning to make this place better. You follow me? And, 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 and that tells me that I have one foot in the realm here. And, and my, my focus shouldn't be on making this place better because it ain't going to get better. It's, it's going it's to be destroyed. 
And it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, right? And so I should be longing for that to happen. I should be longing for other people to have that relationship with Christ so they can experience that as well, right? And so it's kind of a, a shift in focus that I shouldn't be. And, and so what happens then is if my focus isn't on that, then when things don't go well here, I get discouraged or depressed or angry or like, all is lost. And it's, no, it's not lost. God is in control of everything. Everything. Nothing is happening outside of him. Nothing. And the promise that I have, the hope that I have in that promise, and the joy and the peace that I have in it, that will never be changed. Can somebody kill me? Yes, but I don't care. It's ushering me into glory. I don't care. I'll miss my family, but they're going to join me someday if they make right choices. Right? We're so afraid of, 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 of damaging this realm because we're trying to make it so comfortable that we lose sight of it. It's not supposed to be comfortable. It wasn't comfortable for Jesus. He was only here a few years, and man, it killed him. Sorry, I got on a tangent there. This is really cool. In verse 26, it says, The same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. You know, this wasn't part of the message today, but God just jumped it out at me. There are things that uh, we uh, have to give our pigs when they're little, and they're called vaccines. And, 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 and out of the blue, I mean, something, I, I, I've been, like I said, I've been with pigs for 57 years almost, right? And out of the blue, new viruses will show up. Okay, this wasn't that long ago, but we had started having these symptoms and we're just like, what in the world is this? You know, and something that we had never heard about. It was called circovirus. And maybe you've heard that before, but pigs don't like it and they don't do well with it. And so we can give them some immunity to help them deal with it, right? Well, I'm just going to tell you that Jesus has given you this incredible vaccine against sin. And it's called the Holy Spirit. You with me? And it don't wear off. It is with you. It gives life to your body. And it is a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. You with me? We have to understand that. We can't do this on our own. We have to have the Holy Spirit. And we have to submit to the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to die to ourselves. In verse 28 it says, And we know that in all things God works for the goods of those who love him. And that, that is probably the most misquoted verse in the whole Bible. God did work out all things for our good. That is coming. Stop thinking that everything in this life is going to be good because of Jesus. I think that is the lie that we have tried to embrace and that people have picked up on. Don't get me wrong. I want you to have a great life. I want you to enjoy this life. Okay? But that's not the promise that has been given to us. It says here, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What is his purpose? Remember what Jesus said in John 6? What was his will? He came to do not his will, but the Father's will. Do you remember what he said what the Father's will was? Father's will was this. That everyone, everyone would look to the Son and receive eternal life. And that Jesus would raise them up on the final day. Right? Jesus was asked later in John, 
what is eternal life? And he says, eternal life is knowing God the Father and knowing the Son. Can eternal life begin now? Amen. Yes. And, and see, I don't think we understand that. I died. It just said that. We just read that the Spirit gives life to my mortal body. Right? Why do I keep trying to give CPR to my old self? For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. There's teaching out there called predestination that believes that God has chosen who's going to go to heaven. And the rest of you, tough luck. As a preacher, I get asked that question all the time. And my answer to them is, yes, God has predestined, predetermined that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that he's also said that then they will walk as Jesus walked. Does that make sense? I explain that? I explain that wrong? So my understanding is that Jesus is a gift, took the place on the cross for all of us, and took our sin upon himself, right? And anyone, Micah prophesied, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone can call on Jesus' name and be saved. There's not a chosen select. And that's my understanding. If you think differently, I apologize. But we can't stop there. We can't just be saved and have Jesus be our Savior. We have to die to ourselves, and we have to begin to walk like Jesus walked. That's what he just says there. <coughs> to be conformed. He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. We weren't just to embrace him as our Savior. We're now to walk as he walked. So that he would be the firstborn among brothers and those he predestined I also called. Justified, he justified, and also glorified. Then what should we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay, think for a moment. How hard is it going to be to live your life dead and to submit to the Holy Spirit? Pretty difficult? Fearful? Fearful? Can be. So Paul says what? What shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. He is the one who, who is the one that condemns Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life. He is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This morning I felt like I was just supposed to stand up here and uh, just anoint anyone that wants to come forward. If you feel like you've been walking this journey a long time and there are, there are, you, you still feel like you got a foot in the physical realm and you want to die to that, come on up. If you've never made that commitment and you want to die to that, come on up. 
Um, I will anoint you, and I think there'll be some leaders over here you can pray with. But I, I'm just, we are one day closer to Jesus coming back, right? That's, that's all we know, right? It's all we know. But, but I, I am a firm believer, and this is conviction that God's brought on, on me. Um, my plane in the physical realm, it, it needs to get, it needs to get taken away. It needs to die. Because God's not going to draw people to him if I am not sold out to him. You know, the scripture tells us it's going to start in the church. And, you know, why not us? Why not here at Cornerstone, right? Um, Jason will probably play some music here, but if you would like, if there's something that you want to put to death today, um, come on up, and I'm guessing there'll be some leadership. So, so come on up.